Welcome to Digital Asset News and Dan Teaches Crypto. What I want to do today is I want to talk to you about the four-year cycles. And I want to put this video up on two locations. One will go to the YouTube channel. And the second one will be on my 100% free website, Dan Teaches Crypto. So people can find it a lot more easily than searching through a ton of different videos uh, on YouTube. So today, again, the four-year cycles. The question I've been getting is, are, are four-year cycles, what makes them happen? Does it just happen by magic? Is it just by astrology? Do things just kind of come out of the sky? Well, no. Really what the four-year cycles really uh, pertains to, it all comes down to scarcity. And what I mean by that is Satoshi Nakamoto in 2009, the creator of Bitcoin, he figured out a way to make digital scarcity, the first one to do this. And what he did, he said, look, here's what we're going to do. Every four years, the amount of Bitcoin that's able to be mined is going to be cut in half. So when it first started out, We've taken a look at 2009. You get 50 Bitcoin for every 10 minutes that the miners were, were mining Bitcoin. 50 Bitcoins per block. It's pretty good. Four years later, it reduced to 25. In 2016, it went from 25 to 12.5. 2020, it went to 6.25. Now in 2024, as we come up to that, today it is August 21st, 2022. We're going to go from 6.25 in 2020, which is right now, to 2024, go to 3.125. So what does that mean? Well, that means that, unfortunately, it takes a little bit of time to get that into the public consciousness and say, hey, this is going to become even more scarce and more finite as time goes on. So it's time to wake up and take a look at Bitcoin. So when we take a look at this, this is the four-year cycles. And the first, when Bitcoin was created in 2009, so 9, 10, 11, on 2012, which in my, the way I look at it is this is the first real cycle. Yeah, 2012 was a halving. And during the halving, you went from 50 to 25. And then within a year, people started to realize, wow, there's not that much Bitcoin being produced. And it's going to keep getting more and more scarce every four years. Maybe I should get into it. And then the price goes from $14 up to over $1,000. Unfortunately, when this happens, then you can get smart money or some big money, whatever you want to call it. They start to look at this and go, wow, this is overheated. Uh, this is not sustainable. We're going to short the market. We are going to uh, sell like crazy. And it drives the, the, the price pretty much farther down because of human psychology. As, as the price starts to decrease, then other people say, I got to get out of here. And then they start to sell. And then before you know it, you have a big dip, a 314, then a reset. And the same thing happened in 2016. Another halving went from 25 to 12.5. People started to realize, wow, this is getting more scarce. Then they start to uh, invest into it heavily. It becomes uh, overheated. And then, of course, big money, smart money, whatever you want to call it, they start to short. And, of course, around this time, the CBOE came out and said, hey, let's do a futures contracts for, uh, for Bitcoin. And they shorted it and they sold it off. And before you know it, then the retail said, man, everything's going crazy. I need to sell off. And before you know it, it went from almost 20000 to around 3000 in about a year or so. Then you, then you come up to a reset. And then, of course, in 2020, we went to another halving. 2021, we saw an all-time high of 67000 and then, of course, during this time, it was actually you had institutions come in like a micro strategy, like different BNY Mellon banks and all these places that were really getting into into crypto, the Paul Tudor Jones, the traditional finance guys. But then, unfortunately, what happened uh, during around this time is that you had these two guys, Zoo and Davies. We did a video about this, which is Three Arrows Capital. And they were pretty much pulling off a Ponzi scheme as they were uh, borrowing from Paul to pay Peter. And then uh, there was different issues with Do Kwan and uh, Luna, and that started to uh, crash uh, the whole market. And then, of course, then once the market crashed a little bit, and then the uh, the big uh, big money, smart money starts to sell off. Then retail panics, and they sell off. And uh, the dip in 2022 so far has been around between 17,400 uh, to 19,300, somewhere around there. So. That is what happened. And now, of course, we'll see a reset in 2023. And again, the same thing happens again. 2024, we'll have a halving, just like clockwork. We'll probably have an all-time high. Then we'll have a dip and a reset because it'll get overheated, and then off we go. So this is just the things that I see. I can't give you financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. But what I do during these times, because right now it's pretty boring. Things are moving sideways. We're actually going down. I just dollar cost average. And I did this last time. It worked out pretty well. I was buying Bitcoin around 5,000, Ethereum around, uh, I don't know, five, 600 bucks. Cardano was at seven cents, 12 cents. I did that for a couple of years. And it worked out pretty well. We started to hit those all time highs. So, again, 
I buy when it's boring. When it's boring, I buy. The second best time I always think about is things, when things are going up. Now, you can follow a bunch of YouTubers and a bunch of TA people, and you can pay for programs, and you can try to figure it out. I'm not that guy. Uh, that's a different channel, and there's uh, one thing that, that two TA experts can agree on, and that's that the third one has no idea what they're doing. So uh, you can take a look at that. <clears throat> uh, good luck. But I will say this, and that is that uh, as, these, as everything starts to go down, you know, big money, smart money, they, they know what time it is. But retail, I think, is the one that uh, gets caught up in this space, and they're the ones that gets hurt the most. And there's a great, there's a great quote from uh, legendary investor Nick Murray. As he said, don't mistake temporary declines for a permanent loss. You only lose when you sell. And uh, you have to take a look at these things and go, well, will this come back? Is this a good industry? Not all of crypto will come back. That's just the, that's just the truth. Take a look. I, my example always is a dash of salt. Take a look at dash. Take a look at salt. Some dash came back a little bit. Salt is never coming back. And uh, when you take a look at those things, which are the ones that could potentially be the really big ones moving forward? So that's just something to keep in mind. But there are some concerns I have, especially with um, the market itself and where it could potentially go. So with this one, <clears throat> all models, they can become invalidated. This was a very popular one called Bitcoin Stock to Flow made by Plan B. And it took a look at the supply side of Bitcoin, as you start to see less and less supplies we just talked about, and uh, usually it would, would mean that the less of the supply, the more the price will go up, but that really didn't happen. I think one of those problems was because of this issue that happened in our market, but it became invalidated. So with this one, with, with all these four-year cycles, could they become invalidated? Sure, it could most definitely become invalidated. So the question then is, well, what do you do? For me, it's very simple. I just go from this, to boring to buy. The next thing I wanna think about is, Maybe when uh, should I potentially get out? Some people will say, I'm never selling. I'm going to diamond hands until I die. Pass on to my kids. You can do that. Uh, that's just not my thing. And for me, I've taken a look and say, well, this is what I'm going to do in the next bull run for Bitcoin only. Uh, there's a video on the website for my 2024, 2025 bull run exit strategy. And we take a look at seven different uh, cycle top indicators and cycle bottom indicators and just kind of go from there. And it's kind of, as we dollar cost average in, we dollar cost average out. Very simple. So there's that part. And then uh, lastly, I, I will say is this, is even though that we're potentially in this uh, crypto winter or a, or a pullback or whatever you want to call it, just remember this. If we take a look at those four-year cycles, the high from 2013 was around $1,100. And the low, roughly a couple of years ago, was 172 bucks. That's an 85% decline. Same thing if we take a look at the next cycle. In 2017, it was almost 20,000. And then the, the low was $3,200. And that was about a year later, an 84% decline. And now here we are in November 2021, coming up on a year or so as we uh, move forward. But so far, the low has only been around 19,000. That's only a 71% reduction. So just be aware that even though we've fallen far, we could fall even farther. But the last thing I will say is this, and that is that uh, Warren Buffett states it perfectly. The real fortunes in this country have been made by people who have been right about the business they invested in and not right about the timing of the stock market or actually uh, any of those markets. So just keep that in mind as we move forward. And that will conclude today for a little refresher of the four-year cycle. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. We do these types of uh, videos every day, mostly the, most of the news. And that is it for today. So thanks so much for stopping by. I do appreciate it. I'll see you on the next one.